I grew up in Seattle, and I remember one day, I'm about four or five years old, and I'm snooping in my dad's desk, and I'm opening the drawers, and I'm finding treasures. I'm finding mechanical pencils and graph paper with green lines and little green boxes that I can color in. And when I open the door, bottom drawer of my dad's desk, I find his pistol just lying there. I don't pick it up to play with it. I don't pick it up and take it to my friend Teresa's house to show it to her. It scares me. I close the drawer and I go back to my graph paper. Fast forward maybe 10 or 11 years, and I'm a junior in high school, and I've just broken up with my first boyfriend, and I'm devastated. I cry and I cry, and my, my heart is completely broken, and I just want to die. But I talk to my friends, I go to Bible study, eventually I get a new boyfriend, and never once do I think to go back to that bottom desk drawer and get that pistol. I'm Nancy Tangeman, as you know, and I'm the communications lead with the Soulbox Project. When Rhonda asked me if I would speak to you today, she said, you're a survivor, right? Just tell your personal story. Well, I'm really lucky. I'm not a survivor because I've never had to survive. But I do have a story because I'm a human being and because I live in the US. I might be a lot like you in that when there's a commotion at the back of the church, I, even if I don't turn around, I plan my escape route. Um, and just like some of you, when I hear about a shooting, when I hear that a little boy has been shot in St. Louis, or college students have died at a Halloween party in Texas, sometimes I just turn away. Sometimes I just can't take any more news. And then I always turn back, and then I'm very ashamed of myself. Two years ago, there was a mass shooting in Las Vegas, and I just couldn't turn away. 477 people were shot, 58 died, and the other 21,000 people at that country music concert have to live with that trauma the rest of their lives. When I heard about that massacre, I felt like I had to do something, but I had no idea what to do. And then I heard about an artist in Portland, where I live, and she wanted to show the nation how many people were getting shot in America. She was collecting little origami boxes, which you've seen here, each representing a victim of gunfire, and she was going to exhibit thousands of these boxes in displays around the country so people would understand the numbers, they would feel them and they take some kind of action when they felt that. It sounded a lot like the AIDS memorial quilt. It was the Soulbox Project. I'd finally found something I could do, and I signed right up. At that point two years ago, Leslie, the artist, had collected about 200 soul boxes. This week before I flew down here, I updated the Soulbox website. The total number of soul boxes we've collected from all over the country is, and I gotta get this right, 70,619 from all over the country. A lot of those soul boxes represent people have who have died in those mass shootings that we hear about on the news. But we also have thousands of soul boxes for people who have died in daily gun violence that doesn't make the news. We have boxes for people who have killed themselves with guns. We have, we have boxes for people who are killed or injured in accidents every day. Um, we have thousands of soul boxes. And anybody can soul, fold a soul box for our displays. And many of you, maybe all of you have. And thank you for that. So, so far, we've used these soul boxes in eight exhibits, and a small one right here in your south stairway. The very first exhibit was actually at my church, um, First Congregational United Church of Christ in Portland, Oregon. We had 735 soul boxes. They were piled in a corner of our chapel, and each box represented a child under the age of 12 who had 
been killed by gunfire in 2018. That's the thing with our displays, they all represent a heartbreaking statistic so people can see it. We've shown the 3,000 people who are killed every month by gunfire in the US. We've shown the 6,000 people who are killed every two months. And last April, we showed the 15,000 people who had been shot, killed or injured in the first three months of this year. In that exhibit, visitors were immersed in soul boxes. They walked into a gallery and all the walls and the ceilings were covered with these colorful boxes. Um, there's one exhibit and event in particular I want to tell you about. Last February, we took 36,000 soul boxes to the Oregon State Capitol, one for every person killed by gunfire in the U.S. in 2018. We had a solemn procession of over 100 volunteers, each carrying a big clear plastic bag of 500 soul boxes. We walked silently down the sidewalk, we had a snare drummer playing a very slow funeral beat. We stopped traffic when we, we crossed the road. We took our procession and our bags inside the Oregon State Capitol, and we piled those bags in the lobby. And the, the pile was 10 feet wide and eight feet tall. All day long, the, the visitors and the lawmakers had to walk by that stack of, of people, really. They could see the number. They could see what 36,000 looks like. And they would, they'd stop and they'd look closely at the soul boxes, and then they could imagine the 36,000 people who had died. They could really feel them. That's what's going to happen here in Denver on April 18th. First Baptist is taking the lead on an event where members of your own community will take about 30,000 soul boxes over to your own capital. Um, you'll have a memorial service, and you'll remember the people killed and injured by gunfire. You'll also have an exhibit of tens, and, uh, tens of thousands of boxes right here at your church. And you'll be playing a leading role in the movement to show people the gunfire epidemic. As, we're, as you're probably finding out, this is a giant undertaking. And it's not going to be easy. It's not a one and done thing. You're not going to fold during coffee hour and say, well, we did it. Um, it's going to take a mobil mobilization of everybody you know. You're going to have to tell your friends and family and coworkers about soul boxes. You're going to have to take a stack of paper to Thanksgiving dinner and have difficult conversations in a very civil and friendly way, I'm sure, about how we can save lives. You're going to have to recruit people in other groups, schools, churches, synagogues, mosques, book clubs, alumni associations, activist groups, anybody you can think of. Get them folding soul boxes. Get them thinking about the victims. And you're going to need to help Rhonda and her team. Well, you're going to have to be Rhonda's team to do this. Yesterday, right here in your Spring Cafe, we, had, we trained people from your community how to make soul boxes. We had people from Moms Demand Action, Ceasefire Colorado, um, Mount View Presbyterian Church, and people from your own congregation. You're already building great partnerships, and that's what it's going to take to reach, to have this wonderful event. For the next six months, you're going to have to live and breathe the Soul Box Project. It's this beautiful, caring, meditative, healing, artistic project that addresses such a terrible, horrific subject. It's, it's so important to have soul boxes in Colorado. You've been dealing with mass shootings for 20 years. In Denver, there are neighborhoods where survival is an everyday issue. You have more than 400,000 veterans living in Colorado each of them has a suicide rate one and a half times that of anybody else in the country. And you have responsible hunters who see their share of accidents. We need to represent all of those victims in our soul box displays. It's not going to be easy, but you're going to make a huge difference. This is something tangible that you can do. 
you can do it as an individual folding one soul box. You can do it as a group folding thousands of soul boxes. You can do it. And that's the key, you can do it. It's something we can all do. You're going to open eyes, you're going to help people heal, you're going to change our culture, and eventually we're going to start saving lives. We're really honored that you want to bring soul boxes to your community, and we thank you for everything you're about to do and what you have already done, I should say. Thank you.